respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah Azza wa Jal created mankind and He set for him two paths. A path of virtue and a path of evil. And Allah Azza wa Jal gave mankind the ability to identify these two paths. Additionally, Allah Azza wa Jal instilled in mankind the readiness to take the path of virtue or the path of evil. And He gave us the willpower to act upon the choice we make whether we take the path of evil or the path of virtue. So the one whom Allah Azza wa Jal blesses and enables to make the right choice, the choice of the path of virtue, who makes the choice to increase his readiness to follow that path and to purify his soul will succeed. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا He who has purified it will succeed. And he who instills it in corruption will fail. And we must know that qualities are of two types. A type with which one is created by nature and a type he can develop. And there is no quality which one cannot develop, whether good or evil. The Prophet ﷺ said, as narrated by Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, and reported by Al Tabarani, classified as sound by Al Albani, he said in a part of a hadith, "Inna al-ilmu bi-ta'allum." وَإِنَّمَا الْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمُ Knowledge is obtained by learning. This is the quality of knowledge versus the quality of ignorance. So knowledge is obtained by learning. And tolerance is obtained by exerting the effort to make oneself tolerant. And he also, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, and this is reported by al-Bukhari and Muslim, on the authority of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu, وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهُ وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ He who puts an effort to make himself patient, Allah Azza wa Jal will help him become patient. Having said this, evil and good, even in virtue are not equal. Virtue is much, much facilitated than evil. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, on the authority of Muawiyah, reported by Ibn Majah, classified as authentic by Al Albani, he said, Al Khayr Aada, wa Sharru Lajaja. Virtue is something like a habit, it's so facilitated to develop and adopt that people feel that it's a habit. Wa Sharru Lajaja, and evil is not easy to adopt. It takes effort on, part of, on the part of shaitan and the evil inner soul of ourselves. Shaitan plans and plots and beautifies and adorns and decorates it until one takes that bad quality and then adopts it and then acts upon it. Even though he recognizes 
the evil consequences of this quality. For example, those who start smoking, those who start smoking in the beginning, it's either they're young and they want to feel manhood, or they have peer pressure, or they're old and they have, they're surrounded with evil company who smoke, right? In the beginning, they start coughing, their eyes burn, and the chest burns, and they have to allocate money for that cigarette. Too many things, too many obstacles for it not to happen, but when humankind gives in to the whispers and plans of shaitan, it happens. It happens. So if one can adopt and, and develop an evil quality and enjoy it later, can't he adopt a good quality and enjoy it? Isn't it worthier for virtue to be adopted and enjoyed? Allah Azza wa Jal, brothers and sisters, blessed us when He prolonged our lives to reach Ramadan. And it's unfortunate that a full week of Ramadan has passed without, we, without us noticing that it did. But it did. And soon if we live long enough, we will be greeting one another for Eid. So Ramadan is a golden opportunity for positive change. It's a good time for one to start to make the first step towards a positive change in his qualities, in his character, in his life. Because Allah Azza wa Jal facilitated the matter for us. And Allah Azza wa Jal gave us incentives to do virtue and train ourselves on virtue during Ramadan. And He, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us, chained the devils, which are the main source of whisper to our evil inner selves. So these two main enemies of ours are weak. And the virtuous aspect of our personality, the environment surrounding us is strong. See, when these are weakened, these two main enemies, almost the main sources of signals to the heart become one's eyes and ears. And in Muslim communities, one mainly sees during Ramadan good things. He sees people reciting the Quran, praying taraweeh, and he hears good things. So the signals going to the heart help it become submissive to Allah, help it achieve the main objective behind fasting, which is la'allakum tattaqoon. Obtaining piety, consciousness of Allah. So, why is it then, despite the fact that many aspects of our characters and lives need reformation, why is it that during Ramadan this sought change? doesn't take place or if it does it doesn't continue or it is very partial see with regards to change people are three during ramadan some who are indifferent they don't change anything they don't even have the intention to change anything ramadan comes and passes just like shawwal like just like dhul qi'da just like any other month another type are those who partially change or temporarily change but as soon as Ramadan ends, or towards the end of Ramadan, this starts fading away gradually. I'll just give a simple example. In our local mosques, how do the congregational prayers now look? Compare it to the last two days of Sha'ban, 
And remember last first days of, Sh days of Shawwal of last year? That number doesn't exist. It only exists through Ramadan. And even within the community that actually prays the daily prayers, you see a high zeal. You see people not talking too much, not joking around after Salah like they usually do. They just hold the Mus'haf and start reciting the Qur'an and busy themselves with the remembrance of Allah Azza wa So why does this fade away? Why does this positive change does not continue? Well, in simple words, the conditions for it to be continuous are not met. See, though Ramadan is an opportunity and Allah Azza wa facilitates this positive change, yet, if you don't meet the conditions, if you don't fulfill these conditions, you will simply give up and give in to shaitan after Ramadan. One of the major conditions for us to change and continue to change is to identify and admit, and admit that we have a problem. See, no one will work on something that doesn't exist. So unless and until we admit that we have shortcomings in A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth, we will not attempt to change. Number two, sincerity to Allah Azza wa Jal in change. See, if you're not sincere, you haven't met the pillar, you haven't fulfilled the pillar of acceptance and of help from Allah Azza wa Because see, if you're not sincere, Allah Azza wa will forsake you. If we're not sincere, Allah will not help us. And change only happens with the will of Allah Azza wa with the support of Allah Azza wa As Allah says, Inna Allah la yughayiru ma biqawmin hatta Allah will not change the state of a people until they change themselves. So if you're not sincere, Allah will not help you change. Also, truthful will. And as they say, when there's a will, there's a way. When you're truthful in your will, you will find a way. When Allah sees you sincere in your intention, truthful in your will, He will provide you with this strong determination to make a move and make a change. And one thing that has to be continuous before, throughout, and after the change or the process of change is dua. Persistence in supplication to Allah Azza wa You have to admit to yourself that you're nothing. You're a weak slave controlled by your master, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to resort to him, take refuge with him, ask him for help in the change, in the achievement of the change, and in the continuity of the change. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to reform ourselves and our lives and our loved ones. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammadin khatam al-anbiya'i wal-mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'ina thumma amma ba'd. The following are certain things that one can use as help and tools when he is attempting to change. Number one, identify the problem. Identify your errors, your mistakes, your shortcomings. Number two, set an action plan. And within this action plan, put a counter to everything that's evil. If you feel that you're stingy, you can't spend for the sake of Allah, make your objective to become someone who's generous 
and put an action plan for that. Put an action plan, put milestones on the way before you reach your goal for reassessment of your level and your situation and possible changes that you might need to do or make on your plan. Make it a daily routine to hold yourself to account. See, when we don't hold ourselves to account, we have the tendency to feel that we're all right, that there is nothing wrong in us. Again, the issue of dua, as I said, just said, dua has to be a part of your daily routine. This act of worship is very powerful and very helpful. Surround yourself with the right company. Keep company of the righteous and virtuous people because number one, you will benefit from their qualities. Number two, they will help you identify what's wrong with you. See, a lot of times we don't recognize what's wrong. We don't see the faults in ourselves, but others do. So when you're surrounded with sincere people who care about your hereafter, they will surely identify your mistakes and advise you and even help you overcome them and change yourself. Exert all the possible efforts in performing all types of different work, uh, acts of worship. Reciting the Quran, giving charity, attending classes, listening to the class. If you don't have classes in the community, go to YouTube and, and listen to some beneficial heart softeners. And remember, before, during, and after, that it is Allah who will help you. Don't you ever feel good about yourself that I've done it. No, Allah helped me do it. That's a very, very, very lethal trap of the devil. He makes you give credit to yourself instead of attributing the credit to Allah. And as soon as you see any change in you, any positive change, regardless of how minor you might feel it is, express your gratitude to Allah. Be thankful to Allah. Because Allah Azza wa says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you're grateful, I will increase for you. If we're grateful, Allah Azza wa loves that and will further help us. Brothers and sisters, an opportunity is before us, a golden chance to be utilized, a virtuous period of our lives we live through. And it's only days, as Allah Azza wa Jal said, ayyaman ma'dudat. It's not but few days. It's days and they will soon pass. Seven have already gone. So let's open a new page with Allah Azza wa Jal. Let's make a fresh start with Allah Azza wa Jal. Let's be sincere in our intentions of changing ourselves and continue upon the positive change after Ramadan. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to recognize our shortcomings and admit to them and enable us to change and improve ourselves until we reach the level that pleases Allah Azza wa Jal and thus become deserving of His pleasure subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma taqabbal minna siyamana wa qiyamana wa sa'ira a'malina. Allahumma taqabbal siyamana wa qiyamana wa sa'ira a'malina. Allahumma taqabbal siyamana wa qiyamana wa sa'ira a'malina. Allahumma aghfir lana wa rahamna wa aafina wa aafu anna. اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا هداة مهتدين واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى